So welcome back to my series where I spotlight all of the competitors who will be competing in the inaugural Shaw Classic coming up on December 12th, 2020. Ciao, homie! Welcome to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring attention to the world of strongman and show you how you can mimic those activities using everyday objects all around your own property. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing and remember to hit that bell button for all notifications so you'll know whenever I provide all the valuable content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So without further ado, on to today's topic. And by the way, for all of you who like the merch I've been wearing, the My Block Strongest Man t-shirts, check them out in the link below. Just real quick, I put a link in there for your convenience if you like that. And also, for those of you who have your own channel, check out my link to TubeBuddy down below. Supercharges your channel and makes keyword optimization and all kinds of stuff much, much easier. So today I wanted to talk about Terry Hollins, who has hell of a lot of pictures and videos on his Instagram and tons of material for us to follow in his preparation for the Shaw Classic. So while we're talking about Terry, I just want to remind you, I at the time of this recording, I would have released my video on Jerry Pritchett already down here. So check that one out too. You'll love it. A lot of jam-packed information there as well. And probably by the time this releases, my video high highlighting Adam Bishop will be out as well. So check that one out too. Uh, trying to put out as much content as you guys can consume because I know you love the details. So, about Terry Hollins. Well, first of all, how did Terry Hollins do in World's Strongest Man before we decide how well he's preparing for the Shaw Classic? If we go back and take a look at my trusty spreadsheet, and this is back on one of my other videos where I described uh, World's Strongest Man complete day one results, we can take a look at how Terry did. So, first of all, in, uh, in the first event, if we just drop back a little bit here... Terry Hollins did really well, and I believe that was the Farmers. So let's see, um, 52 meters on the Farmers, which he won his he won his group there, right? Um, besting Brian Shaw by quite a bit, although first and second place are only a point apart, right? Then, of course, came the deadlift, where, again, we keep hearing this story about an agreement between him and Brian to uh, tie each other. I guess for the purposes of not tiring out for, you know, should they both make the finals, although that's speculation, right? And so at the end of day one, Terry Hollins ends up a point ahead of Brian Shaw, nine and a half to eight and a half, and that is because Terry won the first event, which gets him five points. Brian gets four points for that event for coming in second. And then in the second event, they split, right? So Terry can't get five points and neither can Brian so they get four and a half each and that's how they ended up nine and a half to eight and a half so then we go to day two and day two is here and again I did a video on this one as well so check this out if you haven't yet lots of jam-packed details and analytics there as well and if we go backward a bit in this video where we can kind of see the top, we see that day two started off with the loading medley with the crazy monster truck parts and giant rims and all that stuff. And Terry did middle of the pack there, right? He came in third, still ahead of Brian. So in this particular case, uh, Terry would get, and let's pause there, Terry would get, uh, for coming in third, he would get three points and Brian would get two points. Um, so then from that nine and a half on day one, Terry would now be at uh, 12 and a half and Brian would be at 10 and a half. Then of course in the dumbbell clean and press, Brian cleans house and destroys everybody um, with not well, Alexi did nine as well, but destroys everybody in his group. Um, Brian does nine reps there, so he gets five points, and Terry gets only two points. So what ends up happening is, if we scroll through in that video a bit so you can see the point totals on the bottom, Brian Shaw ends up coming in 15 and a half points after the first two days, and Terry Hollins comes in with 14 and a half, which is still a point better than Ivar Smokstellis, but they then have to go to the stone off to decide kind of who's going to who's gonna advance, right? And so... What ends up happening there is, if you really think about it, uh, Terry shouldn't have been uh, <laughs> Terry shouldn't have been in that predicament if not for that deadlift agreement, right? Because um, if you think about it, if Terry would have won the deadlift, let's go back. 
and take a look. If Terry would have won that deadlift by doing one more rep, and again, I have no evidence that Brian couldn't have done more. He perhaps could have. I just haven't seen any video evidence of him lifting, and I have of Terry. But uh, if Terry Hollins would have done an extra rep, he would have gotten, let's say, seven reps here and won his group. He would have gotten the five points, and Brian would have gotten four, which means here where they split that half a point, Terry Hollins uh, nine and a half would become ten, and Brian Shaw's eight and a half would become eight. So they'd be two points apart here. And then what ends up happening there is even with Brian's dominance on day two, they end up in a tie. Like instead of fifteen and a half to fourteen and a half, it would be fifteen fifteen. And I don't know how you handle that in a first and second place tie. The second and third place have the stone off, but I don't know what they would have done in that sort of situation. So I can't say Terry would have made the finals, but maybe he would have. I, I don't know what the rules are there. And so that being said, Terry Hollins performed much better than most people thought he would at his age. He's had a strongman career, a bodybuilding career, back to strongman. His body weight has fluctuated up and down to really ripped to really huge. And he just seems to be competitive in anything he does, which is really amazing. And so we move on to how is he preparing for World Strongest, I'm sorry, for the Shaw Classic after World Strongest Man. And what we can do is first look at how uh, he prepared and performed in World's Strongest Man visually. So we just looked at it in a in a uh, table or in analytics. But here you can see this is the farmers. So this is Terry doing very well on the farmers. And he's saying how enjoyable that is. And again, you can see pretty long farmers that bang into the legs and make it difficult. I think Trey Mitchell had problems with it for that reason. And then, you know, Terry talks about having no regrets, just, you know, more motivation. And I don't blame him. He did really well. Like, I didn't peg him to do as well as he did, given he's he's master's age, right? Like, and guys like Novikov and uh, Luke Richardson are really young in comparison. So, um, you know, then here you see him by the Atlas uh, podiums or pedestals. Uh, then he shows some stuff with the family. And then he's got, you know, a big shout out to Adam Bishop. So I didn't realize this, but he's talking about uh, Adam's performance at World's Strongest Man. And also in the buildup, he structured all Terry Holland's training. So I didn't know that. And it's interesting to know that because that might affect my pro my predictions for the Shaw Classic, given these two gentlemen are both going to compete in the Shaw Classic. And if they're working out together, like... I don't know, is, is Terry the favorite because he has more experience at the high level, or is Adam the favorite because he's the brains behind the training? Like, I'll have to think that through and see how this affects my, my original predictions. So that was really interesting. And as we go through more, you know, again, more family shots. Um, his wife competes as well. And then some stuff like with the different products that he promotes. And then another shot from World's Strongest Man. This is pretty cool. Like, he's talking about how he looks, like, mildly unimpressed, but he was really being pensive uh, about the farmer's walk, winning it in his group. And uh, it's interesting. Like, a lot of guys had problems with the swap out for the truck and the farmers, like the truck pull, because certain competitors, especially the more massive ones, typically are better in a truck pull. And it was swapped out due to weather conditions, and Terry's like, eh, no big deal. Like, I'm... I'm not concerned. I could win either one of them, no problem. So it's interesting to see how a really experienced mindset, you know, kind of feeds into that. And here's the, uh, you know, the much talked about deadlift. So count his reps. That's three. And you'll see the video cut off after the six that he does. That's four. And here's five. And then here's uh, six coming up. Barely any harder than the first through the fifth, right? So again, it's, it's going to loop through and repeat. But... All I'll have to say about that is he looked like he had more in him. Now, again, did Brian have more in him too? Maybe. But all I can say is to my eye, Terry Hollins looked like he had at least one or two more reps in him. And, uh, you know, that would have put him near the best of any group. So here he is talking about how he's back in training. This is, seems to be a shot from World's Strongest Man in that double circus dumbbell uh, clean and press medley. And uh, he's talking about how he, you know, has made great improvements this year, and we all agree, and uh, he wants more, right? So more PBs and more titles on the way. And then, uh, let's see, this is equipment. 
personal training sessions, which I guess he provides, and who wouldn't want a personal training session from Terry Hollins? That would be freaking awesome. And then he talks about, like, seeing the challenges in what you do and how that makes life more interesting and, like, how he would be dull and unmotivated if he didn't have these great challenges to try to overcome, which I think is a really great message, especially for the youth. And then, again, you know, some more stuff with uh, different um, apparel. And then lockdown training, right, because of the worldwide pandemic. So he's showing how he and his wife are still keeping very active with training during lockdown. And here is a circus dumbbell. I believe that's the type where you kind of open up the ends and shove plates inside, and it still looks like a big, goofy <laughs> circus dumbbell. So this one's 80K, which would be 176 pounds if my math is correct, maybe with a little bit of change on the end of that. But uh, really impressive. Like, I don't put a barbell with a... 176 pounds over my head with two hands so incredibly uh, incredibly impressive and then as we move through here some more so now we see him working with atlas stones and this one he's saying you know a comfortable 180k stone so that would be 396 let's call it 400 pound stone and i agree with him it seems like he's doing this without much of a problem although it is a single stone right so at the shaw classic there will be I think it's six to eight stones, Brian was saying. He didn't decide uh, specifically yet, but it's going to be a, a good number of stones. So, um, you know, Terry would have to be practicing with multiple stones, not just a max. But he's handling that 400, 400 pound one or near 400 pound relatively easily. Then, uh, yep, some more family stuff in there. And then here's some yoke work that he's done. So 355K yoke. So that is what? That would be 781 pounds, I believe, if my math is right. So pretty impressive, like not in here what was done at World's Strongest Man. I heard the rumor there was that it was 1,100 pounds. But uh, he's also manhandling this much easier than guys did with that yoke. So, um, you know, and he might be working up to a max here or doing multiple, multiple sets. So... Then we move on. Let's see. Now he's doing a frame carry. So, interestingly enough, when you see my video breaking down Adam Bishop's prep, you'll see this exact same garage, this exact same grayed out background, except for the clothing apparel that uh, they're trying to highlight. And that's because there he is. Surprise, surprise. He's working out with Adam Bishop. They're right there working out together. So, again, I didn't know this till I was checking out Terry's Instagram that... Uh, they're, I don't know if you want to call them training partners or Adam is, is Terry's trainer. It, it seems more like that. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it, it puts an interesting twist on how things will go when they compete against each other. And then uh, if we move on, this is another frame carry at a heavier weight. So that one was 240K. This one's 320K. So I think the 240 was the frame by itself with no weights. And this is with weights added, so 320K is uh, like 705, 710 pounds, something like that. So very impressive, although I will say, if you go check out my video on Jerry Pritchett, he was at like, if I remember correctly, like 890 or something like that. So doing a considerably heavier frame at this point if you're comparing the two guys. However... Uh, we should go take a look at the events at the Shaw Classic to see how pertinent that is. And like I said, Terry like posts a whole bunch on Instagram. When I first started this video a few minutes ago, like I didn't even notice this post. I mean, he posted 11 hours ago, but I, I he's posting so much and being so interactive with the fans that I can barely keep up. So what do we have here? He picked up his 36-inch wheels from Rebel Strength, so he can train the 18-inch deadlifts. Okay, so that's that's pretty awesome. Um, okay, some more product stuff. There's the 18-inch deadlift he's doing. So does he say what height it is? When I pulled 450 from the floor, I could only pull 450 from this height too. Easy 432. So is he saying that's 430K? Because that's like incredibly impressive if it is. I, I think so. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not the 537K that Novikov pulled at World's Strongest Man. I get it. But there was also, and I'm not saying I buy into this controversy, but there was a little bit of controversy that basically the weight was hanging from his straps and he didn't barely even had his fingers on it. Watch Terry here. His whole hand is wrapped around the bar. So you could argue that's harder. 
um, the the bar has to travel farther because it's not dangling down from the straps. Um, so anyway, a lot of great stuff on his Instagram. Let's go check out how we think this would apply to the Shaw Classic. And again, these are the events in the Shaw Classic. I've mentioned them in previous videos. And again, they are a log press right here. So a max weight log press who can lift the heaviest log. A super yoke, 1,100 pounds. A farmer's medley, which are three lengths of the course. First two lengths are carrying two farmers. And the third length is coming back with a frame. Uh, max Hummer Tire Deadlift, which is an uh, equivalent to an 18-inch deadlift. Circus Dumbbell for reps. Uh, so these weights, by the way, aren't confirmed. Brian was saying he was going to try to stay within this range, but not totally confirmed. So around 250-pound uh, single-arm Circus Dumbbell dead, uh, um, press overhead for reps. And then Atlas Stones, Brian's trying to stay with a higher count, 6 to 8 stones, and he's thinking a maximum of 440 to 460 pounds. Now, we had talked about some of the other guys, like uh, Luke Stoltman is coming in now, so he brings in some incredible pressing power for the log. Um, Tom Stoltman, is, he declined, uh, probably, I believe, because he wants to prep for Britain's Strongest Man. And so the Atlas Stone threat kind of goes away there and shifts things around a little bit. And then Alexei Novikov, of course, the, the other surprise new participant to take over for some of the injured guys... He brings in his, you know, very recent amazing 18-inch deadlift. But how do we think Terry's going to do? Well, let me say this. Just in terms of preparation, I think he's doing, or at least he's showing us that he's doing, more applicable exercises to what will be done in the Shaw Classic than anybody else I've seen so far. So look at this. We haven't seen a log, but we saw him do a yoke. Granted, it wasn't 1,100 pounds, but might have been a working set. Um, the farmer's medley. So we saw him do a frame carry on his Instagram there. Um, we saw him do very well on the farmers at World's Strongest Man. Uh, the max Hummer tire deadlift. So he just bought wheels to do his 18 inch deadlifts and he's practicing that now. Uh, Circus Dumbbell, we saw him do as well. Alice Stones, we saw him do as well. A little bit less than this weight, but again, it was pretty comfortable for him. So. Like, almost all of these events, he's practicing. And so I think, you know, that, that bodes well for him. Where did I have him? So I had him in sixth place, and I may have to revisit that now because he just... It's not to say that other guys are not doing these exercises. We I, I just can't see them to judge. So, you know, I had him in sixth, and, you know, let's see... Super Yoke, I probably would leave alone because he's still well off what the weight is going to be at the Shaw Classic. Farmers, I would leave him scoring very well like this. These are points, by the way, not placings. So eight points would be third place. Um, deadlift, I'll probably leave alone until I see what some of the other guys are doing. Circus, I'm probably going to have to give him a little more credit than this. So... I have Bishop ahead of him because Bishop's his trainer. But, yeah, I may have to revisit this. So before, we'll do a last-minute update to this and do a whole new prediction video right before the Shaw Classic begins to adjust some of these things based on the things we're uncovering during these videos. But um, I'm hoping that you're finding these enjoyable and that you've kind of come here because you want to get all the latest updates on what all the strongmen are doing to prepare for the inaugural Shaw Classic coming up on December 12th, 2020, and you're getting your fill of all the information so you can, in your mind, formulate what you think the placings will be. Again, what I currently have them as, and I think they might take a little adjustment, is Novikov will again win like he won World's Strongest Man. I have Jerry Pritchett coming in second. He's looking very strong. Uh, I have Brian Shaw, the host, coming in third. So that's your podium. Novikov, Pritchett, Shaw. And then I have JF Caron fourth. I haven't seen much on social media from him at all, so it's hard to judge where he is. Although, he's always good at everything, except log press very recently. So um, we'll see how that goes. I have Big Z coming in fifth. You may say, like, he's he's been retired from international competition how is he not last he's big z that's how he's not last 
Um, I have Bishop sixth, Terry Hollins uh, tied with him for a sixth, funny enough, in points. So we'll see what happens there. And then that would mean there is no seventh, and I would have Luke Stoltman in eighth, Robert Oberst in ninth, uh, Maxime Boudreaux last. The other thing is I've had some folks commenting on some of my other videos that I might be giving Robert Oberst a little too much credit on the log, and he's kind of not at his prime anymore there. I might take that under consideration too and uh, flip Luke Stoltman and Robert Oberst. I don't want to do it right now because I want to make another tab so I can track where I was at different dates. But we'll revisit all these. Hopefully that's a great bit of information for you to formulate your opinions. And I'll see you next time where I go over the next competitor spotlight. Take care. So if you like this video and want to learn more about any of the products I described during this video, make sure to check out the links in the description below. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.